Hey YouTube, Robert here from Hitch to Horsepower, and today we're going to have a little bit different video than normal. Uh, as you know, my channel is mainly about trucks, cars, trailers, that type of stuff. Um, but through some comments, through the comment section, and which I don't quite, still don't know how we got there, but we did, uh, we decided to do a video uh, by request on my uh, firearms collection. Now, I don't have a crazy firearms collection. I used to have some pretty cool things. I might tell you about a few of them that I ended up having to sell. As if you have been a follower of my channel, you might know that I did have some pretty severe health problems in the past. Uh, doing great now, but uh, I've got I've still got some cool stuff. So, uh, let's get into it. Um, first off, one of my carry guns. I don't know if you can... Let me step back here a second. Uh... You can see this side, my cell phone. This side, Smith & Wesson uh, Titanium Airlight in a Action Direct pocket holster. So it just goes in, you take it, you slide it in the pocket. It pretty much hides all the printing, but then you can reach in and grab and the holster stays away. It is a five shot, uh, 38 special. Uh, it is completely made of titanium. Uh, you can still get these air lights, but you have not been able to get the titanium one, the air light TI, in a very long time. It is rated for P jacketed rounds, but very cool thing about it is it weighs 11, right at 11 ounces. I don't know if you can see that. And Yes, this is open. I know it's pointed at me, which is bad, but, um, and even, uh, let's see, it does, it does kick. I'm not going to lie, it kicks even with practice ammo and especially with the plus P, uh, jacketed expansion. You know, I got these, just ignore the part that says law enforcement only. We're not going to discuss that, but, um, we're going to toss five rounds in here just to show you the, to tell you the weight with the five rounds. Because obviously, if I'm carrying it, I'm carrying it with rounds in it. You know, nothing worse, nothing more useless than an unloaded gun, especially one that weighs 11 ounces. You're not going to hit anybody with this thing. So, I'm not going to pick up the scale now, but 13.2 uh, ounces with five rounds. So, yes, it, it kicks. Yes, it has a very, very tiny barrel, but for ease of carry uh, like when i'm in the truck all day this is great and the fact that you know if i have to shoot this most likely it's from the driver's seat to someone trying to carjack me or something like that so i like this gun as a, a very comfortable carry gun but we'll move on to uh my my primary carry gun uh right now i am in the pr process of shopping for a new carry gun because I have a lot of 40 cals um, but I would like to move into some 9 mils I don't know if I want to go to the micro 9's I think I'm just going to go to the regular compacts um, some of the micro 9's I like quite a bit but uh, anyway my current carry gun is an HK USP compact in 40 it has 12 rounds um, capacity 12 plus 1 obviously uh, it's a double action it does have a decock on it on the safety and you know so you got you know, that and then you just decock it or you have your full double action or after your first round you have your single action trigger which is quite nice plus it's an HK it is I mean, there's nothing you're going to do to this gun that's going to stop it from firing. It is just a, just, I mean, there's not many guns out there that are as proven as this is. And I, I just love this. This is a, a gun that has been in the family for a very long time. I think late 90s, early 2000s, this gun's been around. So it has a lot of rounds through it. And obviously I clean my guns, but... There's no issues with that, but yeah, I carry that in a stealth gear, uh, 
holster um, most of the time. And a company out of Utah, which I really like. Uh, here's one of the guns I got recently. This is a, more a range gun. It is an M&P 22 Compact. One reason I, I got this was the cost of ammo. As anyone who does guns know, ammo is extremely expensive right now. I think I just paid close to $400 for 500 rounds of practice ammo for 40 cal. And uh, I think I'm paying 20, 23 to $25 for a box of nine. Um, it's just very expensive. I can get 500 rounds of 22 for about 60 bucks. And I actually said so this uh, has the threaded barrel and I'll show you my one of my other 22s in a minute. I am in the process of waiting for my paperwork through for a suppressor. I have picked up some subsonic rounds too, so get my suppressor and the subsonic rounds. That's gonna be a fun little uh, gun. I love this because uh, it aeronautically, it's, it's a very good training gun. It, everything about it is very, very similar to firing this, obviously, except the kick. But as far as handling, as far as trigger control, as far as sight picture, everything, you can fire, I can go to the range, fire off a couple hundred rounds of this, and then fire a couple dozen rounds of this, and keep very proficient with my shooting. So I very much enjoy this gun. There was a couple other 22s I was looking at, but they were more range toys versus something that is going to be very practical for a training gun. Plus I like showing friends how to shoot and things and it's just very nice to have something like this. I do have segmenting hollow points and it's more about shot placement than the size of the bullet. So you know, if I, uh, if I ever had to use this, which again I pray I never have to use any of these in any real life situation, but you know, be safety. It does have an ambidextrous uh, safety on it. Um, uh, single side on the mag's, mag release though. Uh, I believe it is, yes it is, you could change it to either side. Uh, the takedown is only on that side. But, uh, but yeah, that is a pretty fun. And then, uh, let's stick with handguns I guess. I have here a Glock 27. Um, again, this is done that it's been in the family for a while, uh, 40, you know, so Glock 27 is 40 cal, a uh, fairly tiny gun, um, you know, it is, you know, well, even, it's not that much different size than the Airlite, it is substantially heavier, it weighs, Oh, almost it, one pound, 5.5 ounces. So yeah, that's quite a bit more. I'm wondering, just curious, HK, well, almost a pound, almost one pound, 13 ounces. And the 22, oh, just over a pound. But uh, this Glock 27 is a very, you know, it's a nice, nice pistol. I've got a, um, this was my mom's carry pistol for a very long time. Uh, you know, and she had a uh, uh, Coronado leather. They're a very cool company. They make all sorts of things like jackets with built-in holsters. This is a fanny pack with a built-in holster. Although she went into a casino in Nevada one time carrying this pack. Did not have the firearm in it, but Security spotted the pack right away and followed her around and asked to speak with her. But it's, yeah, yeah I'm, I haven't practiced drawing out of this, but it's very, very uh, possible. This is a, a gun that again is got some kick, but it's a nice little option. I don't know, I'm trying to talk her into something like a M and P E Z, uh, you know, something like that. But uh, a couple things I just pick up, by the way, here's my, my new for my M&P. I haven't put it on yet, I got it, uh, but here's my new threaded adapter for the M&P compact for the suppressor. A couple things I just picked up recently. By the way, I'm trying to do this all in one take. We'll see how that goes. I got 
a MMP Shield 40. Again, I wasn't looking for another 40, but these two guns came up as a, um, it was just a deal I couldn't pass up, let's put it that way. Uh, the Shield in 40 is a 7 plus 1 with this mag, um, with the little extension on here. Uh, and with the extension on, I actually have a full, nice full grip. Uh, without the extension, with the, the 6 round mag, my pinky does fall off the end a little bit. It is a... You know, it's, it's basically a pretty much a stock uh, shield, a Gen 1 shield, 40 cal. But I have not fired it yet. I hope to in the next few days. I'm trying to see if I can go to the range. Either between uh, today's a Tuesday, I'm trying to go uh, the week before Christmas. So I'm trying to go either hopefully Wednesday, maybe Friday. The other thing I got in that deal is a Gen 2 M&P 40 compact. And this... Uh, do this without pointing it at myself has the upgraded sights it also has a an absolutely gorgeous upgraded trigger it's just a very that was stupid a very very nice trigger on it um so yeah i i just got such a good deal on the combo of this he was moving to out of 40 into nine and you know, I'm somebody who likes to collect guns and more than just have, you know, I, I like to shoot. I enjoy it. So I like having some different things. Um, I don't know. I may, may keep these. I may not. Like, my HK, it's never going anywhere. Probably the Airlight, probably never going anywhere. You know, I don't like shooting it that much. It's probably not going anywhere. Uh, these, I'm going to take them to the range, see how they do. I mean, this, I'm excited to feel this trigger because it's just dry firing. It's very, very nice. Uh, the, the shield on the other hand, I don't know. I'm going to have to, have to get it to the range because right now it, it feels very, that it pulls to the wall and then you really got to put some pressure on it to, to get it to go so um i haven't there there are cleaned in oil but i haven't done it myself i will do that before i go to the range just because that is the way i am i like knowing how my guns are are oiled up before and and um well that's it for handguns let's move into some other things oops so uh this is another 22. It's an M&P uh, 1522. Uh, I have, this is a 10 round mag because we live here in Maryland and um, you can possess any round you want, but you can't buy anything with anything bigger than 10 rounds. And this is pretty cool because it is a shorty 10. Most of the time I actually have two 25 round mags that came blocked and I had to travel out of state and unblock them and blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. But um, so the 25, these 10 rounds are very difficult to get. And they're nice because if you're trying to shoot off a table or something, you don't have that 25 round hanging down. Um, anyway, this is a full, it's all set up. It's all pretty much AR controls. This stock is a little, if it was something bigger than a 22, I would say... I would switch the stock. It came with this uh, red dot, green dot sight. Um, but, you know, this is a little wingly, but as soon as you shoulder the thing, everything tightens up, and it's a 22. I mean, I, I've shot it like this, just at an arm's length, and it's fine. Um, it is nice because it does have, uh, again, if you're trying to show somebody, teach somebody, all the controls are the same as any AR-based platform. It's got pick rail up top got M lock on the bottom I might pick up a bipod for it just for fun sometime but uh, having the red dot and the green dot is nice um, you know again it's just a fun toy to go out to the range with uh, I again I've got I've got it set up for when my suppressor gets here so just yeah got that already take the 
I guess I guess we can call it a flash hider. I don't know. Sometimes Maryland's weird. You can't have ex you can't, can't have like a folding stock and a flash hider and something else. It's like you know, but but that's a it's a pretty it's a fun fun little thing. I don't, never weighed this. I'm curious what this weighs. Uh, with the 10 round, we obviously no ammo in it. It is just over five pounds, and we didn't check out the shields. Uh, the, two, the compact 2.0, one pound, 12 ounces, and the shield, one pound, 4.5 ounces. I gotta get a new holster. This came with a holster, but it was one of those Black Hawk holsters where you push the button, and as you're drawing, the as you're pushing that button, it puts your finger right on the trigger, and uh, I could see all sorts of problems with that. So I will not be using that that trigger or that uh, um, holster. I'll be getting a holster uh, again. I'm looking for something like I'm, I don't know. Surprisingly, I'm looking at the new Taurus uh, G3C. I really like that. I like the Canic. Uh, I like some of the M&P stuff. Um, and uh, hold on one second, and then I will get the last the last two guns out and. Uh, but I need to take a phone call. Sorry about that. Obviously, it, well, it didn't really inconvenience you because I just do a little cut and there I am. But anyway, uh, I was trying to do this all in one take, but I had to take that call. Anyway, I uh, got a couple more things to look at, firearms related, and I got a couple things to show you, but uh, let's take a look. Oops, let's try not to knock things over with. So this is a, a Radical NK1 uh, bullpup shotgun, and it has the bullpup with a 24-inch barrel shotgun on. It's got multiple chokes available, uh, flip-up uh, irons with uh, a couple different sight options, um, but I will probably toss a dot on it at some point. I'm trying to decide. I I got this for skeet shooting. Uh, I love sporting clays. One of my favorite things. And you have to have a minimum of a 23 inch barrel at most places around here. And But you know, 23 inch barrel shotguns are very unwieldy. This is a 23 inch shotgun with a very, very short overall length. Uh, adjustable cheek riser, think nice big padded thing. Um, and where did I put, hold on, let me grab this. Sorry about that. So it has a five round. What am I doing wrong? There we go. A, uh, a five round mag. It also has a 10 round mag, you gotta sort of just push that back in and then straight up. Uh, they make a 19 round stick mag like this and then a 20 round drum. These stick mags, I think they're fine because no matter how long they are, uh, they sort of just kinda go in here even though they're so far back. They really aren't a problem. The, I could see, I might have to get the 20 round mag just because, but I could see where a 20 round mag all shouldered could be a royal, uh, it could be in the way, but it would be pretty cool. That 10 round does look pretty cool too, but um, obviously most of the time I'm gonna have two rounds, maybe three in it, because again, I like doing sporting clays. It does have uh, spots for a sling, um, and pick rail up top, uh, pick rail down here. It has a little hand guard. I need to find out because the rules at most of the places around here are, uh, as far as shotguns, the rules say 23 inch barrel or longer. So I'm good there. I got 24. No folding stock. Don't have a folding stock and no foregrip. I don't think that's a foregrip. I, I would say a foregrip would be something, you know, vertical like that, but if it is, I pull that off, you know, it's it's an Allen, it slides off the pick rail, and that's it. But uh, 
again, this is just kind of a, a fun, nice compact thing to do sporting clays with. Um, and I think that's going to be fun. Plus, it's gone up a whole lot in value since I picked it up. So that's always good. And uh, last but uh, certainly not least as far as my firearms collection goes, is something that, that I was in, when I bought, I was not trying to buy. Um, I, I am a World War II buff, but uh, never really thought about these at all. But I do know a little about the history, so when I saw this, uh, I had to have it. Especially because it seemed where it was up sale, for sale, it was an online auction, and it seemed that no one knew what they were looking at. It's a Type 38 Arasaka, and I dropped my Pelican case on the ground. Uh, it's a Type 38 Arasaka, and the two things that made me jump all over it is first off the dust shield is here and two let me see i'm just dropping things all over the place the chrysanthemum is there which if you know anything about arasakas that is quite rare at the end of the war the chrysanthemum was the mark of the emperor for the japanese and at the end of the war the officers uh, japanese officers instructed their soldiers to deface just to scratch off the chrysanthemum before turning the firearms over to the americans because then the weapons had no uh, spiritual value anymore um, and macarthur actually instructed the u.s troops who had them uh, as pri war prizes to do the same thing just to because he was trying to do his best to work with the japanese um, so finding one in this condition and all that it, with that in place, it has, and that says Type 38, it has the markings over here. I haven't had anybody that really knows these yet go over it, but I do know a fair amount about them. The dust shields were removed in a lot of cases because they would rattle a little bit and, you know, obviously you don't want to be sneaking around Guadalcanal with rattle. It does have the, um, the clean rod still. And uh, that is a uh, 6.5 by 28 round. Um, it has the flip up sights with the adjustable for, for range. Um, it is incredibly long. And the funny thing is, so I'm just about six foot tall um 511 and like three quarters and it is a big gun for me uh, it's not I'm unwieldy by any means but it's big the average japanese soldier of world war ii was five three and then factor that you had a big bayonet coming off the end of this that's a lot of weapon for someone who's five three but uh i haven't shot this yet i do have some ammo um and uh, I was at my uh, buddy's uh, firearm shop a couple weeks ago and we cleaned it up really well. Uh, the rifling is not the best anymore, so obviously I'm not gonna be shooting really long, accurate distances with it, but it should just, it, there's nothing unsafe about it. And that was my big thing. Uh, everything works really well. These do, these older ones, you need to actually um, push down to slide in. I do have, I got some snap caps that actually look look very real, but you know, everything does really you know works well in there. And but um, uh, it's a uh, you know so it will everything works well. Um, oh, I'm excited about firing this this uh, except the rounds are about two bucks a piece. So, uh, I am excited, but I'm not going to put a ton of rounds through it. And then just real quick, some things that aren't, that are sort of related, but not firearms. I've got some kind of cool. This is a, uh, 
It's interesting because it's it's 1920, but it is German uh, bayonet, and it is it is pretty interesting. It definitely uh, had an edge on it at some point, and it uh, yeah. F. Mueller Company. Um, that's a pretty neat thing. Um, it's got. It's all. Oops. Got to put it in the right way. But that's pretty pretty neat there. Um, and I have this bayonet, which again, it's got your for your belt. Uh, and that is. I don't know if that would be Geneva Convention approved nowadays. Um, I don't know. It does have the slit there. I don't know uh, what, um, you know, anything on this one. I'm going to get this checked out again. This one doesn't look like it was... It's got a little bit of a point, but it's not like the, that one down there. And then they have have this and this has some very fancy french writing on it i don't know if you can see it and but this this definitely was more a ceremonial item than anything else it has a date of 1871 and uh but that's pretty cool but uh just kind of going over this and then one thing I picked up recently I want to try out is, for when I'm in my truck, so this kind of goes back to the truck videos, and I'll, uh, well, when I'm out in the truck sometime and I install this, it's a little magnet that you 3M tape in place and screw it into place. But then, you take it, and it just mount, mount on the center console or whatever, and then however you want to grab it and that way it just stays in place uh you know like i said i travel a lot and i don't really want to wear a holster all day long sitting and like i said i have a carry permit i've done maryland you have to do 16 hours of range time and four hours of classroom time i'm all done that i just have to finish my paperwork and get approved uh, but the other states i'm good I have a little lock box I carry in my truck so that if I'm traveling through states I'm not approved in, it's all locked up, it's unloaded, all that good stuff. But this is kind of a neat little thing. Just have it in there mounted. I just need to figure out exactly where I want it. But uh, anyway, I, I hope you like this video. It's obviously a little different than my other, my other videos I normally do, but uh, please comment, tell me what you thought. Tell me I've got, um, I do coin collecting too. Anyone wants to see some of my coins, uh, but you know I don't have a ton of stuff. I've got some. Uh, let's not use the N word. Not that N word. Uh, I have a whole bunch of German uh, World War II medals and things like that that my grandfather had. They're pretty neat. But um, a little flag with a swastika on it. I don't want to use it. Be, and uh, I don't know. I'm not monetized anyway, so I can't get demonetized, but, you know, YouTube could bury my video. But anyway, let me know if you want to see any of that type of stuff. Um, some of those medals are pretty cool. Anyway, please like, subscribe, and uh, have a great day. Merry Christmas, uh, Happy New Year, Happy Hanukkah. I don't I think Hanukkah's over for the year, but I'm not sure. Uh, going to help my friend. One of, uh, never mind. Anyway, uh, have a great day, um, and we'll see you soon. Thanks. Bye.